Hey, how you doing? This is Jamal Hill, writer and director, here with Concrete Cakes. Check it out. Flamers. Look, Nicole, I know it might seem like you're leaving your entire life behind, but trust me, sweetie, you'll find new friends here. Nicole, you were almost involved in a homicide. So whoever it was that tried to kill Bam, we gotta handle that. You did? What y'all going on there do? Please drop the name, Meek. Your boy, Sparks, he's been talking a gang of shit. It's too bad I'm after to cut his career short. It's the city of brotherly love. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good question. Um, because I didn't originally start off in the film. You know, I, I grew up in New York and my mother was a uh, session singer and she had a band. And I grew up with music. The music has always been my background. So from that, I transitioned to dancing, music and dancing. And what happened is, after so many auditions and things like that, music videos and stuff, I never really seen the end of my life in music or dance. Because, first of all, I'm in Philadelphia. It's not really an industry town. So, when I graduated high school, I remember uh, being really, really interested in how movies were made. And one movie in particular set it off for me. Um, it was uh, Brian De Palma's Scarface. When I saw that, it really blew my mind. And I started researching that a little bit. And, but the funny thing about Scarface, it made me want to act more so than direct. Because I really didn't know what directing was. So, you know, after playing the acting thing out, it just was so, you, you were so not in control of anything as an actor. You're always relying on uh, getting picked and, and, and just being out there. And it, it turned me off. So I focused my attention on films. And the good thing about films is if you're talented in a lot of different areas, a director has to know a lot about a lot of things. And it was just one of those opportunities that allowed me to express completely what was in my mind because, you know, a movie, you gotta have the choreography down, you gotta have the story down, the acting down, the, the wardrobe. It's just a one big conglomeration of art, and that's what I took to. So it ended up being the perfect medium. After all of them came about, because I finished Money, Power, Respect, and I remember shopping it in LA, and everybody was just like, wow, what is it? It's another drug movie, it's another urban movie, but we aren't really interested in that. And so I vowed, I was like, all right, listen, the next time out, I'm going somewhere completely different. And if you know me, you know that I pride myself on kind of like being a relationship guru. So, you know, in my own mind, at least I think I am. So, it was just a natural story to tell a love story because uh, at the time, I just had a nasty breakup and that's where my head was at. So I took the experience and kind of flipped it around a little bit and turned it into a generic uh, love triangle story. And it just ended up working because we got an ABFF. I got nominated for Best Screenwriter, Best uh, Actor in the Movie, it was Little Zane, um, uh, Best Film, and a few other awards I can't really recall right now. But yeah, it turned out to be pretty good. And it actually put me on the map better than Money, Power, Respect in the industry. Because Money, Power, Respect was my stamp for the streets. It gave me local and street notoriety. But after all, it put me on a different, different plane because everybody said, okay, you can really tell a story. It doesn't really have to rely on, you know, drugs and the streets and everything like that. So. You know, it was, it was a pretty good transition. Well, they say overnight success takes 10 years on average. And Charlie would tell you, Charlie Mack would tell you that I stalked him <laughs> for years. Every time I seen Charlie, listen Charlie, you know, look, I'm working on this, I'm working on that, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And so he always kind of knew who I was because I pound, I pound the concrete pretty hard. And at the same time, he said, Later on, when we started being friendly, he said, you know, Jamal, it's funny because I was tired of everybody telling me about you. 
And every time, you know, somebody makes a something about film, they say, did you, you know Jamal Hill? Or you heard about Jamal Hill? So it was just one of those things where I was looking for him and he was looking to get into a film situation. He just didn't know it was going to be with me. Teamwork. Film making is an absolute team sport. From the coach to the water boy. It all has to be a well-oiled machine, if you will. Um, and I didn't really have that in, in, the, in, in the film, independent film uh, realm because a lot of it, I did a lot of it. I wore a lot of the hat. Like I might, I wrote the script. I would direct. I would even act in it. I would even cook at night and bring the food to set in the morning. And you know, so when I when I went from guerrilla filmmaking to studio filmmaking, you have to trust each head of each department as much as you would trust yourself. And you can't hire anybody unless you know they're gonna do as good a job as you would you would do it. I think no, not I think I know. The biggest thing that I learned and I and a lot of my film making compadres learned it's all in the script. If it's not on the script, it's not if it's not gonna be on the screen. Fix it on the page so you don't have to fix it on film because that's expensive. Delete a couple scenes, rewrite, it's free. It takes a little bit of time. Get it right on the page. That way you can, you know, spend all your time directing instead of uh, editing while you direct. One of the one of the uh, biggest misconceptions in film is that they're gonna come look for you. You know, nah. Like, they're so not gonna come look for you that you can knock on their door with an A-list celebrity sometimes with a script and it still might not get picked up. Like, the film industry is so not looking for you. <laughs> you know? You really have to make them want you. It's just one of those things. Um, the music industry is different. The music different. Uh, the music industry has A and R's who go out, talent scouting and things of that nature. And you have radio who allow you to come on the radio and do free segments like Cosmic Cabs Come Up Show. That just flat out does not exist in Hollywood. You just there is no. There's no overnight success, so to speak, in Hollywood. You really have to put work in. Streets of the One, you know, it's an urban tale about three kids who simultaneously are chasing their dreams, but due to a, a unexpected murder, all three of those kids get thrown into the middle of it and they have to work themselves around this whole murder plot. And that's kind of all I'm willing to say because it's a big twist at the end and it's kind of cool. It stars Nafisa Williams. Uh, Nafisa was in One Life to Live. She's on The Bold and the Beautiful right now. Of course, Meek Mills and uh, Marvin Warner, Sparks, Gilly, a lot of local talent. So it's going to hit really hard this summer, 2012.